Good morning, everyone. And a special good morning to some special guests. If you haven't noticed, we have some very, four very special guests in our front pew here. Three young men and a young woman who are receiving First Holy Communion today. So I want to congratulate David and Jenna, Jonathan and Nate on this auspicious day, this wonderful day. Congratulations. Also, I want to congratulate all the mothers that are here. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. You know, there's a story about a teacher who was um, giving a lesson on magnets to her class. And the next day, she gave a written test. And one of the questions was this. My full name has six letters. The first one is M. I pick up things. What am I? The teacher was astonished to find that 50% of the class said mother. So moms, thanks for picking up things. You know, last Sunday, our Lord compared himself to a vine, and the Sunday before that, to a good shepherd. But today, in all of our readings, from the Acts of the Apostles, the first letter to John, and our gospel, the gospel of John, something else has happened. A new kind of revelation. And it is, it is not a revelation of an image, like a good shepherd or a vine. What God is revealing to us in these scripture readings is his very heart. Not just who he looks like or how he acts, but truly who he is. What constitutes God's deepest mystery is being revealed to us at the end of this Easter season. Listen to what St. John tells us in his first letter. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. Yes, God is love. God the Father is the one who is the lover. The Son is the beloved of the Father. The love between Father and Son is so perfect and eternal and equal is the Holy Spirit, the gift love of the Trinity. God is love, is the deepest mystery and heart of God himself. Now I might be kind of dating myself, but do some of you remember Tina Turner? And her very famous song, What's Love Got to Do With It? I know some of the young people are wondering who, and maybe even some of the older people are wondering who, but I know that those middle people in there, like me, remember Tina Turner. What's Love Got to Do With It? And in that song, I will not sing it to you because I'm not Father Izaki, (laughs) but in that song, Tina Turner says, What's Love Got to Do With It? Got to Do With It. What's love but a second-hand emotion? What's love got to do with it, got to do with it? Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? That's not true. Love has everything to do with it. Look again at our first letter of St. John. And he tells us, in this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world as an expiation for our sins. This pouring out of his very life for us is a manifestation of who he is. Love has everything to do with it. And then in our our first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, this pouring out comes upon not only the Jews, but upon the Gentiles alike. Peter and the other disciples are astounded because the gift of the Holy Spirit has been poured out on the Gentiles also. The Acts of the Apostles tells us. Love's got everything to do with it for God is love. And then in our gospel, Jesus gives us a command. And it is not one of the Ten Commandments 
No, it is the commandment that is superior to them all, the basis of everything, for it is a commandment to be like Him. As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. Do you see? God is commanding us to be like himself. We who have been made in his image and likeness and redeemed in the very outpouring of his love on the cross, we must love as he has loved us. And that's how we become more and more like God. Love's got everything to do with it. St. Augustine says that charity is the only possible commandment. Without charity, all the other good qualities mean nothing. So if we think of all the other commands that we know, and I know a lot of people complain, they say, oh, being a Catholic, you have to follow all those rules, right? But if we love, it's as though those commandments aren't even there in a certain sense. Because if we are truly loving, we will follow those commands with great ease. Think of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not kill. Well, one who loves does not kill, but protects life. Thou shalt not steal. One who loves not only does not steal, but shares his or her possessions. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Those who love respect marriage as a bond of love that is faithful, exclusive, and fruitful. As St. Augustine also once said, love and do what you want. Meaning that if it is true love, it is of God. And all the other commands then are lived so easily, freely, and as an expression of of true love. This commandment, Jesus reveals to us in the gospel, this commandment of love has a shape. Yes, that's right. Love has a shape. And it's not a square or triangle or rectangle or circle. This is the shape of love. It is the shape of of the cross. But Jesus goes on to say, this is my commandment, love one another as I love you. And how did he love us? No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. True love is the love of the cross. It's self-sacrificial love. So every time we listen to a friend who's going through a difficult time, when we work overtime for more benefits for our family and we have to suffer a bit, when we endure other people's character flaws, go the extra mile to make sure our children are able to enjoy life and have advantages, helping a neighbor with shopping, Look into your own marriage, those of you that have that wonderful vocation, and you can see each and every day that love of marriage has to be lived by way of the cross. I don't know how many couples I have met just in the last few weeks where I was tending to one spouse who was ill or even dying, and that other spouse was sitting right by their side and have been by that person's side day in and day out, suffering along with them because they knew that love has a shape, the shape of a cross. That is the love of God. Our culture tells us that we should follow our own desires and chart our own course and find yourself. Well, this is the litany of of individualism where the self becomes the center of life. The purpose of life, however, is not to find yourself, but to lose yourself. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. 
I think we clearly see this, and I end with this thought and story. I think we clearly see this on a day like today, Mother's Day. Really, think about your own mothers. Think about the ideal mother. And we can't help but think of the love of the cross. How many of our mothers have given of themselves? How many mothers are up early in the morning and late at night for their children's sake and for their husbands? How many mothers have sacrificed sometimes even great aspirations, including even sometimes careers, so as to serve their family? How many mothers have given up so much, even of their very lifeblood, if you will, to bring forth children? How many mothers have been quietly yet firmly protecting their children and their husband so as to help them to be holy? How many mothers have been on their knees day in and day out, praying for their husband, for their children, for their family? Mothers, you know what it is to love with the cross. There's a story about a math teacher who once asked one of her students, suppose your mother baked a pie. And there were seven of you in the family, your two parents and five children. Suppose she baked a a, a pie, what portion of the pie would you get? And the little boy said, one-sixth. And the teacher said, no, I'm sorry, maybe I didn't make myself clear. There's your parents, that's two of you, and the five of you, so there's seven all together, and your mom bakes a pie, what? slice of the pie do you get? And the boy said, one-sixth. With that, the teacher said, well, obviously you haven't been listening to our lesson on fractions. And the boy said very respectfully, well, yes, teacher, but you don't know my mother. Mother would say, she didn't want any pie. Love has got everything to do with it. It is the love of the cross which manifests the true meaning of love.